Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Accessing Art. I'm your host, Rena Hanowski. In this show, we get a rare glimpse of local artists working behind the scenes in their own studios, offering their personal perspectives on the process and the creation of their art. Today, we visit artist Blaine Filthalt, who is also the owner and curator of the Broken Spoke Fine Art Gallery in Maple Creek. Blaine is a self-taught artist who not only works mainly in oil, but mixes his own paint from pigment to achieve a true vibrant color. Okay, Blaine, are you ready for some random questions? Shoot. That's my favorite part. Okay. okay. <laughs> what sound do you love? Oh, uh, actually, my favorite sound these days is uh, the quietness. Mm -hmm. Just uh, the quietness in the morning. There, where there's one of the nice things about Maple Creek, there's no air conditioners running, there's nothing running. It's just dead, still, quiet. Nice. Yeah. Would you rather live where it's constantly winter or constantly summer? Both. Both? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I love the four seasons. I lived in Florida for 15 years and it was constantly summer there. And sometimes it feels like it's constantly winter here, but the four seasons is the best, and even though some of them are short. But <laughs> yeah, you appreciate them all. I uh, appreciate them all. Yeah. Good. What's your biggest pet peeve? Pet peeves is... Um, <laughs> uh, unclosed cupboard doors or just stuff like that for you know walk around the corner and could run into something and yeah, yeah. that's that's my biggest pet peeve i can understand that <laughs> if you could describe yourself in only one word what would it be Ooh, uh, i'd say adventurous i like to do different things new things um, always learn always got to learn nice. uh, adventurous yeah. okay and do you have a favorite sport football Football. Back home in Saskatchewan. Yeah, eh? Canadian football. <laughs> Canadian football. One of the advantages of actually of uh, living in Florida while I was living there was uh, CFL Saskatchewan Rough Riders was free on the internet. No so, way. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you got to watch got to sports watch the games. there, hey? Is, is, is that your favorite team? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and what is your dream car? Uh, dream car is a truck. What kind it of would truck? be uh, <laughs> the oldest farm truck you can get. <laughs> okay. Uh, one that you don't care about. I don't like things that have uh, too many dials and too many things that can go wrong. I'd rather have a window that I can roll down, uh, and that's that would be my favorite. What do you drive now? <laughs> the one I drive now. <laughs> Is it a truck? <laughs> yeah, I forget 1980 something. I don't even know the year. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. so you're driving what you love. I'm driving what I like. Good. Have you ever seen a ghost? Uh, no, but at the gallery here, uh, we're told constantly that this is high, good energy here. And in the five years that I've been doing renovations in this building, when I go downstairs in the basement, mm -hmm. I always find something that I need. Or if I'm looking for something, it's there. And I could have walked there 20 times and not seen it. But when I need it, it just pops up. It's amazing. So you yeah. have a ghost that returns lost things. Something like that, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. That's great. <laughs> and what era would you choose to live in if you could? Uh, I like the uh, I like the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I don't think there's any, imp any okay. era in particular. Do you believe in aliens? Absolutely. Yeah. You do? Well, I don't think we're alone. Yeah. Have you seen one? No, I haven't no. seen any All right. yet. All yeah. right. What's your favorite piece of art in your home? Uh, actually, my favorite pieces of art are here. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of like the uh, French expression where the, the shoemaker son wears the worst shoes. <laughs> uh, I don't have that many art pieces at home. <laughs> <laughs> I like that expression. Yeah. Last question. A penguin walks up to us wearing a sombrero right now. What is he doing? Oh, what my goodness. What does he say? Wearing a sombrero? Yeah, he's got a sombrero on. Uh, well, which direction should I go? <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Okay, Blaine. So you mentioned that you're not from here. Where were you born? I was born here. Oh, you were born oh, here. Yes. Okay. Born here and uh, yeah, stayed here until uh, age of 12. And then we moved to Swift Current. Mm -hmm. But after that, after, uh, after high school, I've been Montreal for 25 years mm -hmm. and Florida for 15 and BC for five. So okay. uh, this is coming back home. 
What and, brought you back? Well, that's kind of weird. I was living in the States at the time and wanted to come back to Canada because things down there just weren't the same. Um, so I had two jobs, one in Montreal uh, and one in Calgary, actually three, one in Red Deer. And my sister called me in the morning and said, um, you got to go work in Maple Creek. Do uh, whatever you have to do, but you have to go there for art. And she said, you know, go as a handyman. So I'm in Florida at the time and I literally put on my search engine Maple Creek. Mm -hmm. And right at that same time, a position for manager of the Pioneer Co-op Home Center popped up and I applied for that and got it. <laughs> I owned a construction company at the time and that's what brought me to Maple Creek. And then subsequent to that, about five years after coming back here, four years ago, or five years ago, uh, this is the gallery. Yeah. And here you are. <laughs> yep. So your other jobs, were they art related? Um, in Montreal and stuff? Yeah. Uh, no, they were high-end finance. Okay. And I was in corporate finance. Uh, it was actually, what took me down to Florida was, uh, was uh, chief financial officer for a major Canadian company in finance. And that's what took me down there initially. Okay. And then that company got, or that part of the company got closed and I literally spent two years uh, figuring out what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I uh, gave myself that time, golfed a lot and you know, had fun. And um, the last week before making up my decision, I just got inundated with the people that I was meeting and they were all related to the art field. Mm -hmm probably like 50 different people in a week. Mm -hmm. Board directors, artists, uh, it's weird. And so I uh, knew at that time that I had to stay there for art. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can't just stay in the States for art. So I actually uh, opened up a construction company and that's what got me to be there. But I spent uh, the next uh, 10 years doing art. Nice. Yeah. So how did your journey begin as an artist? Uh, by pure coincidence, uh, I ended up having living <laughs> in half of a garage <laughs> behind me was kind of an eclectic, strange individual, but he had a double master's in art. Mm. And he became my, uh, uh, there wasn't a painting that I didn't do that he would come over and teach me on how to do this or how to do that. So he became my mentor. Wow. Yeah. You got pretty lucky with that. Totally. Neighbor, right? <laughs> yeah. But were you always in, interested in art? Uh, like? That got me into it right away. Really? Yeah, because there's uh, literally the moment that I decided, I was still, um, the first painting I did, I went out and I bought, you know, like everybody does, I guess. But I, I don't know what happened. Somehow I finished this painting in one night and, uh, and I finished it really good. <laughs> and, um, uh, back in those days, I had a cleaning lady that used to come in and I walked into my condo and she's there and she was deer struck. And it was, it was relative because uh, <clears throat> there's a place called uh, Kingsley Plantation. Mm -hmm. And the gentleman, uh, he had, uh, he wouldn't take slaves, he had free people. He paid his slaves. And so Florida kept on trying to uh, pass laws so that he couldn't do that. And instead of succumbing to the laws after the third time, him and his slaves actually walked down this road and moved to another country. Mm. And <clears throat> that plantation still exists and it's called the Road to Freedom. Mm. And she, that's what she was looking at and that was my first painting. Wow. Yeah. That's so it was, a significant one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that one sold right away. <laughs> it did? Do you yeah. have a, pictures of it still? Uh, geez, I don't know if I do, and it's not even that well done. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you know, you're self-taught. You never really took any formal training. Then. Uh, what I did, uh, the only training I would do is I traveled quite a bit. So if I was going to uh, Colorado, I would try to find an artist that was giving paint lessons and just to find how different people in different areas mm -hmm. Uh, did things so right. that type would be part of my vacation. Yeah. yeah, were you surprised where you are now 
I mean, you were in finance, yeah. right? And, and now you're an artist. Are well, you surprised where, where life has led you? Not really. Uh, and there's a reason for that. Um, and I used to always tell, uh, you know, in the balance sheet, like a perfect balance sheet on a, on a major company, it's got to be perfectly structured. Right. And I, you know, the different instruments or whatever you use to make up the balance sheet is no different than mixing up your own paint and doing your color. So that was kind of the way I looked at it. There was a norm on how to do a balance sheet and it was, you know, try to be artistic on that side. Yeah. So I consider it almost as, as weird as it sounds as being almost artistic with the, in the finance side. With numbers. <laughs> yeah, with numbers, yeah. And speaking of mixing, you had mentioned that you mix your own paints. Well, and that's what I, right before I left Florida, the gentleman that I was talking about that had the mm -hmm. double masters, uh, I started going into just doing the pigments and mixing it with a uh, real old uh, oil. And, um, and it's what the masters used to do. You know, that's what, th th it's the same pigments that they use. <laughs> How do you mix pigments? And, yeah. Pardon? How do you do it? What is the process uh, There's of a that? glass, well, different pigments have different, or have different uh, thickness to the grain or different, okay. uh, need to be ground up uh, somewhat. So you, you, you get them ground up already. But the last part is there's a, I have a glass palette that's got kind of a rough area and you put the pigment there and you put oil on the pigment and you have to grind it down to its consistency that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they're all different. You know. prefer that than squeezing it out of a tube? <laughs> yeah, because you know what you're getting. <laughs> Good point, yeah. And yeah. Uh, it was, he told me back then when I started to do that, that I would have to relearn painting, and you literally do. Um, the, I was putting, some of my exercises I was doing was just putting colors beside each other on a vertical line. And I'd be putting a, a green color up and but when I put it on the canvas and the color it was next to it, it wasn't green and no matter you know you just it's like an optical illusion mm -hmm. and it, the I find the colors were just much more vibrant and work better together uh, that way yeah. yeah your work is very vibrant talk about your work tell us you know. I've, I've, I've always liked maybe a little bit too much detail sometimes mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get away from that I'm trying to find out a little bit more towards abstract these days, but I'm having difficulty getting to that because uh, I do like doing landscapes. Um, that's what I always did when I was in Florida. And uh, in Florida, I was actually part of a, a studio where we were six artists and we were all landscape artists, so I was pretty much focused on that okay. yeah. uh, back then. And what I like to do, my, the challenge for me is to uh, get depth, uh, is to get deep, 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 deep depth. And so that's what I'm always working on. And then, of course, color. The composition is something that um, is very, very important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in studying and you know using the magic triangles and different spots and paintings I've, I do a lot on that side however uh, what I've found was um, you get places on certain websites uh, or certain uh, pictures I'll, I don't mind doing a painting from a picture but I won't use just anybody's picture okay. <laughs> I've got to use a picture that somebody is out there one of the nice things about Florida was that they would always have, um, call it their game wardens or their naturalists or whatever, mm -hmm. their pictures that they put on the park websites were, come and enjoy it for, for anybody's use. They take better pictures than I can. <laughs> so uh, it would be the area that I want to paint, but I would use their pictures as the inspiration on, uh, and then I would find my angles and stuff. Okay, yeah. so how do you begin a painting then? Uh, first by, well, determining the subject matter, which yeah. angle, height, distance, all that type of stuff. Um, something that's going to interest me, then I'll find what colors I want to do, and I try to keep it down to as few as possible. You know, three or four would be idealistic. Mm -hmm. um, and just to make sure I got the proper colors, and then I'll start drawing the painting. A uh, couple of minutes with the graphic stick, and then after that I actually draw with the colors. 
-hmm. So, yeah. That's great. And then just layer. <laughs> and then you like, yeah, you had mentioned you, yeah. do, you like layers. Yeah, I like layers that just slowly start to get the depth and get the tones and the, yeah, just work on it until yeah. I get tired of it. Yeah. <laughs> How has your practice changed over time? Uh, yeah, I think I'm getting more, um, definitely getting way more liberal. I'm realizing now that you don't, you don't have to put, especially if I'm doing a field or something, I can just put different strokes in a few areas and it'll make it look like a field. And mm -hmm. so it's figuring that out, mm -hmm. uh, speeds things up. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't like to put much more than about 40 hours on a painting. I usually run, time to move on by then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have a strict uh, schedule that you adhere nope. to when you go in your nope. studio? Just when I feel like it. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about your studio. I prefer to actually, I prefer, the best time is I prefer early morning when it's dark outside and I've just got my studio light on it, yeah. no distraction, and uh, usually like to have some good music on in the background okay, or yeah. something like that and yeah, just get lost in it. Yeah. yeah. Talk about your studio. Uh, studio, yeah, it's yeah. just my retirement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, really happy with this. Uh, you know, uh, fortunate to have a studio. Uh, in fact, before I got this building, I started doing a studio in my garage. Um, so now I got two studios. Mm -hmm. um, but this one is one, it's, it's, to me, has turned into almost, uh, it's almost like a field of dreams. And, uh, you know, you build it, they'll come. Because I didn't build it, you know, knowing that it's going to have a Glenn Scrimshaw and an Andrew Kiss and a Neil Patterson, you know, famous Canadian artists. Uh, they all showed up. And uh, I didn't ask any of them. They all came here and found me. You know, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, I like how you describe that field of dreams. Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so they came to you and you built this amazing gallery. Can mm -hmm. you tell us about that? How uh, yeah, old building. Um, boy, I guess it was meant to be a gallery at some point or something, but we took all the walls out, uh, right down to the floor. There were seven layers of uh, tile and wood and carpet on the floor. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we started to discover uh, the building and what it was about. Uh, we did get it classified historic because it is 106 years old this year. Um, and it's tall ceilings. I just designed the walls kind of uh, oblong and, you know, different angles um, so that it's a pleasant place to walk through. And we do hold uh, musical performances here also uh, in the summertime. Usually we've been attracting, again, great artists uh, that did a show in Regina last night and maybe have a show in Calgary mm -hmm. in two nights and Maple Creek is right in between. So That's great. we get the benefit of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you have a certain amount of artists that people can come and see a, a whole body of their work. It's yeah. not just one of their paintings. We only have nine artists here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, the intent would be maybe to have a, a rotating artist at some point in time, but. Uh, the nine that are here, they want to be here, and uh, you know, and now people know that their work is here, and mm -hmm. and it takes time to develop a market. And somebody like Andrew Kiss, uh, you know, knows that, and he's done it, mm -hmm. and so yeah, we sell his artwork here, and people look for his artwork here. So it's um, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, what are your current projects? Are you working on anything right now? Uh, we just finished up, uh, yes, <laughs> um, it's going to be another quiet winter. Um, we're usually not open in winter time, so that's going to be the time for me to paint and, and think about what we're doing, you know, uh, next year. So we're starting to line up our, uh, hopefully everything's going to be fine. Uh, we're starting to line up our show for next year on who the artists are, because we do have shows with Andrew Kiss and uh, Susan Wolgar, they all come down, so we want to uh, start lining them up so we get that into the proper publications mm -hmm. uh, and get the word out there. Uh, and we're just getting good at that. You know, we've really only had, um, although we've had the building for all these years, we've been working on it. And this is only the second year that we have our full complement of artists. Okay. So this is uh, still brand new. Yeah. Nice. And we can see your work online, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, blainfilthought.com. Oh no, sorry, another one. <laughs> uh, Brokenspokeartgallery.com.
Okay. And actually links to just about all of the artists are on that website also. So you can go in and see the artists, the different artwork. Okay. So we, and you're on, um, you sell your art on some, where were we talking about? Fine Art show? America. That's right, yeah. Yeah, Fine Art America is a Kodak, or is remnants of Kodak. Um, it's international. And um, for artists, it's a great, it's a good sales site. <laughs> I don't know that you would sell that many on there, but um, back when we used to do, um, I did road shows from Virginia Beach all the way down to West Palm Beach, back and forth for uh, four or five years in a row. And instead of taking boxes of prints, I would just refer people to Fine Art America because that's where I'd get my prints from. Mm -hmm. And they could choose their frame or whatever they want. So it was easier selling it that way. It mm -hmm. was like having a... <laughs> Uh, your wholesale house was always with you. Yeah. yeah. I like that part on on your website, actually, that you, if you can't afford the painting, you could buy a print. You can buy a print, right? yeah. So that makes it accessible for everyone. And what's really neat about Fine Art America <clears throat> is, and I don't know to what extent it is still true, but um, I haven't done this in a while, but Fine Art America was one of the key components of being in a Google search engine. Mm -hmm. So... Um, if you would search Jacksonville, and I live you know, close to Jacksonville, the big city, a million some people right. in Florida, if you would search Jacksonville artists, I always came up number one. And it was because of those sites and that type of exposure. Yeah. You know, so it's just, it was a good, a really good tool. That's great, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of your art, I did see some from when you lived in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, so are you painting mostly um, prairie landscapes now? or Prairie landscapes, uh, I was doing some um, elevators. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy with how I'm doing my elevators yet, so I'm still working on that. Um, I mean, Saskatchewan's the land of the big sky, so mm -hmm. I have always enjoyed doing skies and if there's one thing I try to catch in my art book is um, cat capturing what I would call a unique moment. We all see it, mm -hmm. but it's it's rare, you know. And um, a good example of that, if you've never done it, and I encourage anybody to do this because Saskatchewan is a great place to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's called the blue moment. And the blue moment, have you ever heard of this? I've never heard of that, okay. no. <laughs> there's actually a blue moment, an orange moment. Uh, there's several moments. And I'll just describe a blue moment to you. Okay. Uh, fresh, um, we may be able to see it this weekend. A brand new fresh snowfall. Mm -hmm. And clear blue sky. And so if you're looking out over a white field mm -hmm. and the sun is setting uh, in this clear sky, the moment that you can't see the line in the horizon between the sky and the snow. And that lasts for about 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, that's called the blue moment. And what you do is you look at that for, you know, the horizon's gone, you stare at that. And if you turn around and look at uh, a branch or a tree or something next to you, it will be the opposite color of what it is. Oh. <clears throat> and that's just, it's a, it's a visual effect. So if, if there's orange in there, I turn around and it's going to be, be blue. blue. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I've never heard that. And it lasts just for, it's just, it's an eye trick. Yeah, yeah. Because your eyes get adjusted to this pure blue moment and that, that twig, instead of being yeah. brown, it will kick out the complementary of that, the orange and the red, it'll make like bright. Right, right. Yeah. And that, that's, that's incorporated that's in so many of your paintings because yeah. there is such vivid blues or vivid and that's oranges. that's to catch those colors that work together, yeah. And that's your, is that what inspires you? Or? Uh, that's something I work towards. There was one painting that I did one time and it was uh, fair size, you know, uh, two foot by four foot. And um, it was just a sun, but I did it in, you know, from the white to eclipsed it out, so to speak, and made the front really hot, you couldn't look at it. Uh -huh. It was too hot. It was people, the person that bought it, and he bought it outside, he couldn't look at the painting in the light because it was that bright. Was that yeah, and that's intense. why he bought it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like looking at a mirror. That's amazing. Yeah. So what would you say is your goal as an artist? Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know that there's really any goal. I think um, I enjoy what I'm doing. I like learning. The one thing that I've done over time is kept track uh, to some degree uh, would be to write a book. Uh, Self-taught artist is, if it's done properly with a few people, it's not expensive to do art. You don't need to buy 16,000 different colors. You know, you need the, the basics and that's it and, and learn how to mix and it makes it easy. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's what I would, and that's what we did in our uh, courses, a buddy of mine and we used to give as our courses, uh, we knew how to mix paint. So uh, people's paintings look good. And uh, so to relay that type of uh, information to people is, or do a book on that, something basic okay. would be fun. So it wouldn't just be a book about your art, you would actually, it no, would be like an instructional an book. An instructional book, yeah. I think that's great. No, idea. not about my art. No? no that's <laughs> <laughs> Why that's, not? No, 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 that's, no just uh, more instructional than anything else. That's yeah. great. Is there anything else you'd like to add about your art? There's, um, yeah, I mean, the person, uh, you know, like when you're learning and and you get onto a technique and you know we've got uh, there's an American gentleman his name is Stefan Quiller and he's my inspiration uh, he is considered as the world's uh, renowned master of color he actually even has his own color wheel and so his uh, teachings in color are just like phenomenal um, People like him help people learn art easier, I think. And you know, that's, I like to do those shadows like that, that's for sure. The Broken Spoke Fine Art Gallery is a treasure to explore for all art lovers and even has an attached unique gift shop. The gallery features art from Blaine and established well-known Canadian artists. Most summers, artists' receptions and special events with live music are hosted. Join us next time on Accessing Art when we meet with another amazing local talented artist. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Rena Hanowski, reminding you to let your creativity be your canvas.